doesn't matter how you approach Bible study or reading the Bible. Let's start by saying the average American household owns three Bibles. The most sold book in the U.S. is, wait for it, the Bible. Yet Americans are the most biblically illiterate Christians on the face of the earth. Now, of course, I'm not here to offend anyone. I'm just here to shed light on the problem. And in reality, if this offends you, it might be because you don't read your Bible. Or why would you be offended, right? According to a Barna study, 65% of Americans claim to be Christian while only 6% have a biblical worldview. That's startling when you think about it. 6% of Christians actually know and believe the Bible, which belongs to the religion that they claim to belong to. It doesn't quite make sense. In fact, the numbers just don't really add up. So why don't more Christians have a biblical worldview? The easiest and simplest conclusion to come to is because they don't read their Bibles. I mean, that's as simple and as basic as it gets. But what if they do read the Bible? and still don't have a biblical worldview. Do you know any of those people? Because I do. How does that even out? How do you read your Bible and still not have a biblical worldview? What are the reasons for this and why do they need to be addressed? I take these from Jesus's own words in the Gospel of Luke chapter eight. Jesus talked about the parable of the sower and how the seed fell on four different types of hearts. So let's dive into this passage of scripture. First, notice the seed is the word of God. Sometimes we think because we hear the word, it's enough. Or if we show up to church, then we're okay because we heard the pastor preach a sermon. But that's the deception of reading the Bible and or going to church, but never allowing the word of God to take root in our hearts. Everything is filtered through the mind before it enters the heart. So once we hear it, what do we do with it? Let's evaluate the four responses to the word and go from there. If you go back to Luke 8, you will see that first the seed fell on the path. Think about it. A path is for walking, not for planting seed. What falls on the path is trampled on by passersby. People on the path hear the word, but the devil comes and takes it away. What is the consequence of this? They don't believe. That means that those along the path hear the word of God. They hear the same word in the same Bible that you and I hear, but they don't receive the word for different reasons. Most of those who hear it, but don't receive it, don't understand it. They don't take the time to listen. Just like when Jesus told parables and the people were like, what's he talking about? They may not agree with what they hear and they don't receive it as truth or the culture influences them more than the word of God does. So they disregard it or they toss it. Whatever the reason, they still hear. In fact, all of the people in this parable have that same thing in common. It's the word of God. They hear it, but they don't receive the word. Secondly, there is the seed that fell along the rocky ground. This analogy isn't really difficult to understand. No one planting seeds plants a seed in rocks. We know that they won't grow. They won't fall into soil and take root, right? I mean, I'm not a horticulturist, but I know that. People on the rocky ground receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They have no depth. So they respond to it quickly, give their hearts to God. But when their faith is tested, and let me just tell you a little secret, everyone's faith will be tested, everyone. But when their faith is tested, they all fall away. The root comes from discipleship. These people need to get rooted in the word of God, not just hear it, but to study it and to be discipled by other people. Third, there is the seed that fell among the thorns. Again, no one plants seeds in thorns. I'm not a farmer, but I do know a thing or two about common sense. And yeah, we're just not going to plant seeds in thorns or rocks, right? That would be a bad idea, especially if you want something to grow. Those in the thorns are the ones who hear, but they are too distracted with the cares of life. Aren't we all? That's a temptation. They worry, they chase wealth, and they chase pleasure, and they don't grow, so they fall away. This is another word for maturity. They don't have any root, so they don't grow in maturity in the word of God. They're still on what Hebrews would say is the milk of the gospel, and they can't handle greater knowledge. 
This too are those who lack discipleship and commitment. The focus is not on the Lord and on the growth and on maturity in the Lord, but on the routines and distractions of life. And honestly, that hinders how we hear the word. And finally, there is the seed that fell on the good soil. Good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, as Jesus describes in Luke 8, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Now, let's stop here for a minute because we see a step-by-step -step progression that the others in this parable were lacking. First, the ones on the good soil heard the word, but they all heard the word. That's what every hearer had in common. They all heard. This is step one. They all had step one in common, but it can't be the only step. For Christians who hear but do not progress past hearing the word, they will become one of the other three types of people in this parable, but they won't be the one who received the word and sprang up and produced a crop. The second step is the one on the good soil retained the word. What does to retain mean? Simply put, it means they kept possession of the word. They let the word take root in their heart and they lived by it. It was something that wasn't just heard. It was something that they lived. In fact, James 1.21 tells us to keep the implanted word, to receive the implanted word with meekness, which can save you. The word of God has to go from here to here. That's the, that's the route it should take, and that's how it's implanted. And then, and only then, can step three take place, which is producing a crop. That's the fruitfulness of Christian living. That means we bear the fruit of living out the word of God. So if they all heard... What's the difference between these four types of responses? Because that's what they are. It's a response to the word of God, to hearing. Is it within the control of the hearer to determine how the word falls on their hearts? Jesus repeats a phrase often throughout the gospels, and it's this, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Well, they all had ears, so they could all hear, right? Physically, yes. Spiritually, not so much. I think one of the main challenges and commands to this parable is what Jesus said in verse 18 of this same chapter. Jesus said, therefore, consider carefully how you hear. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken away from him. How we approach Bible reading, Bible study, and even a pastor's message determines how we will respond. Are we there to make ourselves feel better? Are we reading our Bibles to check a box? Or are we approaching the word of God with the intentions on listening to receive and to understand and to live it out? Isn't that something to think about, to even ask ourselves? Because then and only then can we truly understand why 65% of Americans claim to be Christians, but only 6% actually have a biblical worldview. I think the reason the word of God doesn't change us is because we aren't careful how we listen. How you hear determines how you respond. And I'll be honest, there are times I'm listening to the Bible app in the morning while I'm getting ready for the day and I check myself because I'm not listening as it's on. I have to remember to heed the call of Jesus to consider carefully how I listen and then I'll be more likely to allow the implanted word of God to take root in my life. And guess what? So will you and everybody else who claims to be Christian. For more studies, apologetics, and podcasts, like and follow or go to shandafulbright.com for more. Actually, I have Baseline Apologetics coming out on October 10th where I lay the foundation of Christian apologetics because sometimes apologetics is intimidating. And if you want to know more about how to lay the foundation so you can understand the why behind the what of Christianity, go to shandafulbright.com forward slash courses and sign up for this six-week course with live Zoom sessions with myself. And I'll catch you on the next one.